know that when we love something, we worship it? Come on, I, I don't think you, you caught that. Put your hand in the air. Put your glove on. Amen. I'm going to throw it again. I say, when you love something, you worship it. Amen. When you love that new car, man, you put a wax, three coats, five coats, ten coats of wax on it. You love that motorcycle, man, you drink it out, put new tailpipes on it, right? New chrome, new this. Amen. You gotta worship it. Amen. But all those things will fade away. But when we worship the Lord, when we love the Lord, amen, his word should never fade away. Come on, man. But before I get into our, our teaching this morning, can we just see the, another worship song? Is that all right? Yeah. All right. You were I love this person. I love that person. Well, God is love. Doesn't, doesn't he love me? 
Yes, he does love us. But but with that love, you know, comes conditions, right? Not conditions, but there needs to be an obedience in that love. See, when we abound and increase in love, we are speaking of growing in the knowledge of God. And that's what we're here to do, right? Grow in the knowledge of God. See, the Bible said that many people are always learning, but never coming to the understanding of the truth, right? Many people got more, more degrees on their wall than blisters on their knees from praying. Hello, somebody. We grow in the knowledge of God when we go deeper in our love for him. Amen? Amen. The more we love, the deeper we grow in the knowledge of God. The more we love. The more we love. The more we love who? What? Not it, right? The more we love God, we grow in the deeper knowledge of him. Amen? Amen. So how do we, can we take the hum out of here? How do we understand, how do we demonstrate our love for God? How do we demonstrate it? We go out there and do works? How do we demonstrate our love for God? Now I go to church, that means I love God. Look. Tithes and offering. At least I give up my tithes and offering. That means I love God. Brother Jeremy. Obedience. Obedience. Right? What are we talking about here? We're talking about obedience. Right? We demonstrated our love for God. Was that up there? No. Okay. Well, let me, let me give an answer out just yet. <laughs> Getting ahead of me. We love God. Through obedience. Now, I have a little dog at home. And many of you come over and you see my dog. We've even been here and I brought my dog here. Amen. Now, not that we're dogs. We can learn a lot from a dog. Can I hear somebody say amen? <laughs> All right. Now, I know there's some cat lovers in the house. Right? Right? Wave your hand in the air. you cat lover. Nobody? Okay. We got one cat lover. Praise God. <laughs> but how many know that the difference between the, the cats and the dogs? I see that the cat will, will come and you feed the cat. The cat just prowls around the house like, "Where's my food? Like, you better get my food, right?" The cat will just you come home. The cat don't reach you. Am I am I right? You may know any cat lovers. Like, you, you had a cat. I had a cat as a, as a youngster, right? That's why I don't like cats because I came home and they greet me. <laughs> cat just chilling. Like, you better come pet me. Right? I, I'm, the, I'm the focus. You, you take care of my needs, right? And so the cat's running around, tearing up stuff. Like, look, you better fix it. Where's my toy? Find my toy for me. You know, come play with me. Yeah. The, the, the cat was, was the center of attention, right? You know, you'd be home, gone for like weeks. You come home and the cat's like, oh, you back? Where's my food? Where's my water? But no, a dog. Yeah. yeah. You get a dog, man, and you, you ain't been gone five minutes. You may have walked out to your car and came back in, and the dog is licking you at, like you've been gone for eternity. Yeah. Oh, like, oh, master, where have you been? It's so glad to see you again. Right. And then you're like, get down, get down, get down. No, 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 master, it's going to be at your feet. Play with me. Let's play. Get the ball. Here's the ball. They'll go get the ball and bring it to you. Like, come on, let's play. I want to be with you. I want to spend time with you. Where are you going? Don't go to the bathroom here. I'm going to sit outside the door and wait for you. <laughs> right? You go outside. I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit in the window. And I'm going to look for you. Yeah. Right? Yep. Man, I, I love dogs. Amen. Right? But we can learn not a lot from a dog. Yeah. Amen? We're talking about love. Right? Loving the master. Yeah. Right? And in that relationship, the master and, and, and dog relationship, the, the dog loves the master. You know, he licks your hand. He sits at your feet. Amen? He waits for you by your bedside. Ooh. Protects you when there's a bump in the night. If you don't have a dog like that, you better change dogs. <laughs> Amen? But in that obedience, amen, you tell him to do tricks and stuff, he does tricks, and he knows he's going to get a reward, yeah. right? He knows he's going to get a reward. If he stay there, and I walk over there, I know 
that I'm going to get a reward from my master. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stay right here until he calls me. Ooh. See, we love God and our demonstration for God through obedience. See, Jesus expressly proclaimed it that it's not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, will inherit the kingdom, but those who seek to do the will of the Father. Amen? And, and, and many times in the word, we're discussing or we're evangelizing, and people say, well, I just call on the Lord at that last minute, I'm going to be saved. The, the Bible says, not, not what Reggie said, amen, not, not, not what Pastor Ben said, not what Pastor Peter said, but, but the Bible says, this is what Jesus said, right? He said, not everybody that called on me is going to be saved. Mm -hmm. Only the ones that seek to do the will of the Father. Right there in Matthew 7, 21. Good. See, loving God is therefore not a passive matter, but it is an active matter. Amen? Amen. See, see, passive means that, that it, it's mine and, and then I can do with it whatever I please. No, active means you're actively seeking and searching to do the will of the Father. In order to know to do the will of the Father, you have to know the Father. Right. Amen? Amen? And we know the Father through the Son. That's right. So obedience is an action that is motivated by love for God. You ever find yourself in a situation where you you know, like, man, in the natural, I don't want to do this for this person, yeah. right? But because the love of God is in you and flowing through you, you're like, man, God, okay, I'll do it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Like, man, God, okay, I hear you. I hear you. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Because we know that, that those that do the will of the Father are the sons and daughters of the Father. Amen? Amen. Amen. So in 1 Samuel 15, 22, when the prophet uh, Samuel was speaking to Saul, he said, it is, more, it is better to obey than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And we're talking about you know, many times we can be so busy but not moving nowhere. Amen? Many times we can fill our calendar with a lot of multitasking, but we're not busting a grape and a fruit from it. Amen? Why? Because we, we think, that, okay, I'm sacrificing all this. You know, I'm taking my family here. We're sacrificing that. I'm sacrificing this. I'm sacrificing that. But, but, but where is the obedience to the Lord? He said, just be obedient in this little thing. Amen? Faithful in the little so I can entrust you with more. Amen. So it's not about the sacrifice. It's about obedience. What does he desire for you? And what he desires for you to be obedient in is not the same as what he desires for someone else to be obedient in. Amen? Amen. It's still the will of the Father. He wants this person to do one thing. He wants this other person to do another. But many times we look at the other person and say, well, I want to do it like that person. Well, God has not called you to do it like that person. God has called you to do it like you. Yeah. Amen. 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 I was reading something. I didn't know this. That that, that Tiffany, Tiffany rings, Tiffany, you know, jewelry. Mm -hmm. is, is Tiffany inspired, but, but there is no two alike. Did you know that? I did not know that. So, so even though they have this design team that designs these, these jewelry, these rings, there were no two Tiffany things alike. Much like God has created us. Amen? Amen. Our fingerprints. Now, we may have some identical twins. What are the twins at? Uh, Come on. Praise God. You a twin? I didn't know that, brother. Man, you a twin. All right. Even though they may look the same on the outside. Amen? The fingerprints are different. Things are different, unique about that person. Yes. So when God has called us to obey we must listen to the voice of God to obey. Amen? Not Amen. others' uh, plan. We follow the plan of God for our lives. Next slide. Obedience is a resolve and the product of God's grace in our lives as we grow in the knowledge of God. Product. 
I'm talking about product, right? I'm a product of the home. Amen. Amen. I'm a product uh, of Jesus Christ's salvation. Man, I'm a product of that. What does that mean? That means that, that because this has happened and I've accepted this, that means I am who I am now. Yes. How many understand that? That's right. Because of God's grace upon my life, because he didn't leave me in, in the situation that I was in, and, he, and I accepted his grace, I accepted the salvation, amen? So now that I am grateful to him, I am obedient to him. I mean, you understand what I'm saying this morning? See, many times we, we, we get into situations and God's got us out of it. We say, God, you get me out of this situation, I'm never going to do that again. Yeah. But a couple weeks later, well, I'm, that's grace right there, maybe a couple days later, yeah. you back at it again all, and forget all about what you didn't told God. Come on. Right? So, because that, that attitude of gratitude was lost, that, that, that the attitude of being grateful because of the grace that was extended to us was lost. So we go back to doing what we did. Amen? Amen? But see, when that genuine gratefulness comes in, yeah. and you begin to look at the things that you have instead of the things that you don't have, there is an overwhelming sense of gratitude that whatever you ask me to do, Lord, I will do. Wherever you want me to go, God, I'm going to go. Whatever you ask me to say to somebody in your name, Lord, I'm going to say it. Why? Because I am grateful of what I have. I'm not looking at what I don't have. Amen? So because of that, that's the product of God's grace. My obedience is because of his grace. And I grow in the knowledge of God as I continue to say yes. Amen? Amen. But then there are certain levels of obedience. Right? There are certain levels of obedience. Yeah. Much like that illustration with the puppy. Right? When you first get him, he don't know obedience. You tell him to stay, he comes following you. you tell him, tell him to, 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 to sit, he wants to run. Right? There, there's no, no obedience in the, in the beginning stages and the stages, but, but as he graduates to different levels, he begins to understand. Yes. Amen? So as we graduate to our different levels of obedience, we begin to understand the truth. So the first level of obedience. Next slide. First level of obedience is fear. We do something out of fear. Amen? Amen. This obedience is motivated by, motivated by the, the awareness of the consequences of disobedience. As it talks about in Ephesians 5, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons and daughters of disobedience. Right? So I'm not going to do that because I'm scared I'm going to get a whooping. Right? Not because I love my parents, so I'm scared I'm going to get a whooping. That's the consequence. Right? Amen. So, so Fear is a motivating factor in obedience. As you're rearing your children, right? Right? You, you, you tell them, look, you act up in the store. When we get home, you're going to get it. Hello. Come on. Tell me that's not striking some fear in them. Well, if you follow through, it should. Amen? Amen. If, you, if you follow through, they know that that, that ain't playing. When I get home, I'm going to get it, so I better straighten up right now. But if you don't follow through, like pastors say, you sell a wolf tickets, right? Amen. So fear is a motivating factor. See, man, I'm not going to do this because God's going to, the wrath of God is going to come upon me, so I'm not going to do it, God. Just, just have mercy upon me, Lord, and you're walking on eggshells every day, afraid of something to say or something to do because you think God's wrath is going to fall upon you. You're walking in fear. <laughs> but see, God is a God of justice, yes. Amen. That sin does not go unpunished. However, we do not obey God just because we want to avoid punishment. Rather, we obey out of submission and love for him. Yes. Amen? Amen? We obey out of submission and love for him. If we, we need to progress beyond the fear as the only motive of obedience. If we're just fearing God, we're missing the blessings of God. We're, we're, we're missing the, the joy of God. We're, we're missing the fellowship of God because we're so fearful. Amen? 
Next slide. Bible says in Philippians 2, 12, it says, Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. I'm sorry, that's Proverbs 3, 7. And so then, just as you have always obeyed, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible tells us about fear. Fear tells us that we need to walk away or, some, or sometimes hide from something. Amen? We try so hard not to make mistakes because we don't want to be hammered by God and lose the rewards in heaven. We live our lives just enough to get by. Plan is safe. Plan is safe. I like, mean, I'm not going to uh, uh, take a risk in this. What if I go evangelize and, and I pray for somebody and, and I, I declare healing and they don't get healed? But what if they do? But, but, but what if they do? Amen. Amen? See, see, it is not us that declares the miracle. It's not us that, that, that makes the miracle happen. Amen? It is not us that declares the timing of the miracle. It is the Lord. We're just a vessel. Amen. God said, go lay hands on and declare healing on that person. Then, then believe in God and lay heal, hands and healing upon that person. And let God do the rest. Amen? Amen. Amen. But we can't continue to, lay, to, to play it safe if we're, going to be, if we're going to be obedient to God. Amen? So if we only obey out of fear, then we're wrong. We're wrong. We're missing the blessings of God. We're missing the joy of God. God's a loving God. And we all make mistakes in life. Amen? Amen. Or was it just me? No. Amen? No. We all make mistakes in life. Amen? So, so yes, we're going to go through it. And as pastor will say, yeah, when you miss it, you're going to miss it. But it's what you do after you miss it. It's what you do. Are you going to stay down there and grovel and have a pity party? Are you going to dust yourself off and get back on a horse and ride off into the sunset? Come on. Yeah. Amen? Amen? It's what you do after you miss it. Yes. But you can't be fearful of missing it. Yet you don't act at all. Amen? Amen. Amen? So God is a forgiving God and loves us regardless regardless of the mistakes, so as long as we turn our hearts back to him. Yeah. Amen? I was watching a, a movie the other day, and and, um, and it, was, it was funny. It was kind of cliche, though. It was like there it it was a relationship thing, and, and the guy was, like, trying to, you know, get with her, and he was like, look, we've already gone this far, and, you know, you already sinned. Now I might as well go ahead and, you know, take the road trip. Wow. 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 Right? See, God is a forgiving God. Let's not take that road trip. Right? Let's repent and turn our hearts back unto the Lord. Amen. So, even like the puppy, the puppy responds at times out of fear. Amen? He go gets in the corner because we yell at him out of fear. The next level of obedience, as we transition from fear, and we go, God, man, God is wrathful. God, he's going to bring down a fire and brimstone like he did in Sodom and Gomorrah. Man, I don't want that to happen to me. As we get past that, amen, we know God is able to do that. Yes. But we don't live under that fear. We live in an attitude of reverence because we know that he can. Yeah. Amen? We know that he can. Amen. So that next level of obedience Is a selfishness obedience. Ooh. See, this obedience occasion by the awareness of what we can get out of obedience. Wow. Mm. See, this is clearly demonstrated by Peter in Matthew 19, 27. It says, see, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? What's in it for me? If I obey you in this command, well, what's in it for me? Right? If I go through the home, then what's in it for me? Oh, if, if, if I take this side job and be obedient and cooperative to the team, then what's in it for me? Oh, if I drive the van, what's in it for me? Yeah. If I become staff, what's in it for come me? On. Come on. Right? If I become an usher, what's in it for me? Come on. Talk about if I become in the sound and media, what's in it for me? Yeah. If I become a kids game teacher, well, what's in it for me? Come on. We're looking at what's in it 
from me. Sometimes this truth is demonstrated in human relationships, whether between children and parents, right? I'm in the store acting up, but what's in it for me? If I be good, I want a Snickers bar. If I be good, I want some Skittles, right? I, I, what's in it for me? And besides not getting a whip when I get home. What's in it for me, right? Or between workers and their bosses, right? You ever you know, have that boss and, and, and you know, co-worker relationship where you go to the boss and the boss tells you, hey, I need you to get this project done by the end of the day, okay? But your day ends at four, his day ends at eight. Oh. He wants you to get this project done at the end of his day. And you're like, okay, what's in it for me? Come on I mean, what, I'm gonna stay four hours older, over, but what's in it for me? You know, I'm gonna get paid a little four hours, but what else is in it for me? I mean, I'm gonna be obedient, but I'm looking for something in return. Uh, Amen? Amen. So even between our spouses, hello, Mary couples. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Man, I'm gonna make this bomb dinner for my wife, right? And <laughs> got some candlelight, <laughs> right? She's like, okay, that's nice. What's in it for me? Right? I washed the car. Yeah, you want something. What do you want? Uh, right? <laughs> so such relationships, they lack genuine love because they're mechanical. They're going through the motions. They're, they're looking at, yeah, if I'm obedient in this, I'm getting something in return. See, our obedience to God should not be selfishly <laughs> motivated, but informed by genuine love, irrespective of what we get or don't get from him. Wow. Amen? Amen? He's already done enough. If he don't do nothing else at all, right? He died upon the cross. He took upon our sins before we were even born. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. So he don't do nothing else at all. He's already done more than enough. So I'm going to be obedient to him, not looking for what's in it for me. Because he's already done it for me. So whether I, I, I go get that new job or whether I go get a rib or whether I go get that or this, God, I'm going to be obedient to you because you said you desire obedience over sacrifice. Yes. And that's how I demonstrate my love for you because you demonstrated your love for me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen. 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 That's good. And next slide. Paul, who wrote, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. Come on. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me the strength. Yes. See, we like to use that scripture, amen? We about to go out and uh, do a side job or lift some weights or run a track event or clean a house. I don't, we, we begin to recite that scripture that I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Well, he's talking about contentful living. Yeah. Amen. Amen? amen? Contentful living, man. Okay, there's some days that your check going to be nice. And there will be some days your check ain't going to be so nice. Okay. Amen? There's going to be some days when your refrigerator is full, and there's going to be some days when your refrigerator ain't. Come on. But when you still love God, That's right. That's right. when you still be obedient to him without expecting anything in return. Amen? That's what we're talking about. Uh, he said, I, I've learned to love. I've learned to love God no matter what I have or don't have. I learned to be obedient to his word no matter where it takes me, who I talk to, the, the, the hood I got to go to. The, 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 the city hall I got to go to, the police I got to talk to, God, hey, I'm all yours. Amen? Amen? So we live in a world that wants something in return for something. We don't do things for nothing. I mean, we've heard the, the <laughs> saying, nothing in life is free. Yeah. Right? we heard that. Ain't nothing in life is free. You got to make your bones. Ain't nothing in life is free. Nobody will get nothing. Well, when God's in the mix, they will. Amen. I, I've, I've been in situations and known situations where people stood before the judge and said, he said, you know what? I don't know why I'm doing this. Come on. Come on. That's right. The case is dismissed. Well, yeah. I don't want to see you here again. Praise God. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but see, we do things sometimes out of a selfish obedience to God because we're looking for something in return. We're thinking like, man, 
this brother did it that way and God blessed him this way. If I do that too, then God's going to bless me in the same way. Amen. Wow, Amen. right? Yeah. Talk about it. Am, I, am I hitting home right there? Or, or the sister, she looking at the other sister like, man, she went through this right here and got blessed like that. Then I'm going to do the same thing and God's going to bless me in the Amen. same way. Because that's what I want. I want the end result of what she has or he has. So I'm going to walk the path that they walked. And thinking I'm going to receive the same blessing <coughs> if I receive. We're obedient out of a selfish motive. See, the danger is when we turn that kind of attitude towards the Lord. When we tell the Lord that we will obey him, but then set up some kind of condition for him. We tell the Lord, if we obey, then he should give us things we want. Wow. Wow. You've had that prayer, right? God, I'm praying, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing everything you ask for me. How come you ain't giving me what I want? Wow. Because wow. Father knows best. He knows you ain't ready to get what you want. Oh, come on. Amen? Come on. He, he, he's saying, look, in, in, in due season, you will reap a harvest if you don't give up. Yes. Continue to be obedient to my word. Continue to pray. Continue to fast. Continue to intercede. And guess what? Your blessing's going to be there. That's right. Amen. That's right. But not because you want it, but because I want to give it. Somebody. That's heavy, right? Yes. That's heavy. Not because you want it, because he wants to give it. Mm. You ever got a Christmas present that, that you received, and it was something that you desired, yeah. but you didn't tell nobody you wanted it? Yeah. Wow. But it was right on time? Hello. Man, Come on. that's how God works. He knows your heart's desires. Amen. Yeah. He knows what you need and what you want. Yes. But in his timing. Right. In his season. Oh, Amen? Amen. Right. So don't we put conditions on God. God, I'm, I'm going through the home. Man. I'm only giving you six months, God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, okay, you give me six months, but I'm giving you a life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what's a life compared to the to six months that you declare that you're going to give me? Hello. I don't want six months, God said. I want your heart. Amen. I want your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. So then, next slide. So when God stops giving, we tend to stop obeying him. We feel a disconnect from God because he did not respond with what we wanted from him. Man, Man you know what, God? I'm giving up. I've been praying for that nice job. I've been praying for this. And man, God, I don't see it. So you know what? I'm done. I'm walking away. I'm going back. I'm going back. All right? Been there? Done that? Seen it? Come on. Paul says your obedience should not be based on what you will receive or your circumstance. Regardless of the situation, you should always obey God. Why? Because God can see further. God has that, that, that telescopic lens, right? That can see further. How I many know we got a microscopic lens? Yes. Microscopic, okay, for, for those that didn't go through biology, I'm going to tell you what that is. All right, microscopic lenses, you can only see the, the, the teeny tiny things that's right of, yeah. before you. The teeny tiny things that are affecting you, that's discomforting you, right? That's, 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 that's causing you to be a certain way. The teeny tiny things, right? That are make, that is causing you to make a decision. When God has a telescopic, Hello. like a Hubble telescope, Hello. he can see far and he knows the plans that he has for you. Amen? The plan to give you a hope and a future. A future. Amen. So the Lord loves you so much he gives you his word. <clears throat> Are you willing to follow his word and just obey? Now I, 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 I put that in there and I, I was thinking like you've seen that clothing line, right? Mm, yeah. Right? What's that clothing line? Obey. obey. They got it on their hats. Right? And again, what is it? Shirts? It's just hats. Shirts, everything, right? Yeah. Obey. Obey. I saw one kid with the obey stuff on. He had handcuffs on. Uh -oh. yeah. I was like, okay, so, so what, are, what are they obeying? Yeah, that's it. What is it just obey? Obey what? Obey my, my feelings. Obey my, my, my own thoughts. Obey you know, what I want to do. That's what I'm going to be obedient to. Nah. 
See, the enemy has turned the word of God around and has used it in a, in a, in a negative context, right? The Bible said we're to obey the word of God Amen. and follow his word. Amen? Amen. Amen. And here's, here's the reward. As the Bible says, next slide. How blessed are those whose ways is blameless, who walks in the law of the <laughs> Lord. How blessed are those who observe his testimonies, who seek him with all their heart. Amen. Amen. With all their hearts. See, the Bible calls us to, to follow him with all our hearts and not a questioning kind of heart or a doubting kind of heart. Amen? A questioning kind of heart or a doubting kind of heart. Now, I'm reminded of Abraham as he took Isaac up there to the mountain. Amen? And Pastor Tony was sharing. It's like, man, Isaac was a grown man. They get up on the altar. I'm going to tie you up. Here's the dagger. I'm going for it. Right? Abraham didn't doubt. He knew that the Lord would provide. God, you said it, so I'm going to do it. Amen? So even he's calling us to obey him with all our hearts. They follow him with all their hearts because we love him so much. I remember my prayer, and I still to the day, like when I pray, I pray to God, you know, that my obedience come without hesitation, and that it comes out without reservation. Amen? Amen. Hesitation is, you, 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 you're kind of going to do it, but you, you're going to do it when you want to do it. Right? You're going to do it when you feel like doing it. That's a hesitation. And then the reservations, you have doubts. Man, God, you, I know you want me to do this, but I don't think I have the capacity to do it. You call me to, 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 to get inventive, but I don't know if I can study. You know, my brain cells are fried, God. Come on. You want me to be a learned student of your word and your law? Man, I, I can't remember what I did yesterday. You want me to remember a term? <laughs> oh, I can't remember what I did last week. I, I went into Bethy like that. You know, with insecurities. Didn't think I could learn or study, right? I went in and, and, and not thinking that, man, I can, I can write a three-page paper. I can't even put down thoughts for one page. Come on. But God said, no, nah, I'm going to restore unto you these okay. things. You just do the impossible and leave the impossible up to me. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I feel plugging in for that to Hello, somebody. Amen? Come on. So it's not about you. It's about what God's going to do through you. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right. So our next level of obedience. Here we come. As we begin to not close, but come to the end. Next slide. Next level of obedience. Out of love. Amen? Amen? This is the highest level of obedience to God. We obey him no matter the circumstance or the outcome of our situation. Amen? Amen. This is the level of obedience which Jesus invites us to do his will. If you love me, keep my commandments. As it says in John 14, 15. If anyone loves me, he will keep my commandments. He says it again in John 14, 23. Why do you think that is? He's trying to drive something home, Amen. right? And as we're growing up, even right now in ministry, right, we don't get it the first time. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello, somebody. Yeah. Don't touch that. Don't do that. Come over here, right? We don't get it the first time. So it has to be repeated. So Jesus repeats it. Look, if anyone loves me, he will keep my command. And I say it again. If you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. If, then. Right? If you love, then this will happen. See, God in his sovereignty will always demand and expect his people to obey out of love. And this is where the, the, the sea is divided between those that say, yeah, that God loves me. Then those that say, yeah, I love God. And I'm obedient to him. You know what I'm saying? There's those that are on this side of the fence that say that God is love. And yeah, he knows I love him, but I'm not going to be obedient to him because he already loves me. So why should I be obedient to him? Wow. But then the other side of the coin, the other side of the fence, the other side of those that say, you know what? I love God. Therefore, I am obedient to God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And this is the highest level of obedience. We do it out of love. Yeah. Like, man, I don't, 
And God, I just love you so much that, you know what? I'm going to make these double services. You know what, God? I love you so much. I'm going to go share the gospel. I remember when I was saying that coming out of the home, God, God, where are you going to go? Whatever you want to do, I'm going to do it, God. And, and I remember up in North Las Vegas as I was driving a car that I didn't have registered yet. Hello, somebody. You, you know what happened next, right? Yes, I got lit up. It pulled me over and took me in. But I was calm. I wasn't mad. You know why I wasn't mad? Because there were some things that I, didn't, that I hadn't cleaned up that began to catch up. Amen? Amen? But as I'm sitting on that curbside with the handcuffs on, because this registration was expired, because I had you know, warrant for you know, driving without a license, driving on a suspension, driving no insurance. Hello, somebody. Can anybody relate? Amen. Praise God. And so, uh, I'm sitting on the curve, but I, there was a peace about me. There was a peace about me. I remember that, that, that when we went in, they took me down to Clark County, you know, CCDC, right? And we're back there in, in the South Tower. And they dressed me out. I said, like, wait a minute, I'm not staying that long. <laughs> <laughs> they did a traffic warrant. I'm not staying that long. You, I don't, you know, you get dressed out and took my clothes and everything. And I was like, man, maybe I'm going to be here a bit long. I don't know, but, but God, nevertheless, you're with me. I'm, you know, I'm praying. I'm, I'm worshiping. So we, we, we're in the South Tower, and then show me where I'm going to be. And I just got to look around. God, show me where you want me to minister. Show me. And he began to bring people you know, to me, and we had a little Bible study right there in the South Tower. But before then, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. And remember, we would go to the CCDC every Sunday morning to have service. And we'd always pray, man, God, open up the doors for us to get into the North Tower. Open the doors for us to get into the North Tower. Man, that door didn't open, right? So here I am now in the South Tower, right, ministering. The next day, somebody said next day. Next day. Next day, they transferred me to the North Tower. I started praying to God. It was what I was praying for, but it wasn't how I expected it was going to be delivered. <laughs> Amen? So as I'm in the North Tower, same thing. Okay, God, I'm reminded of the prayer. Right? You ever been in that situation? Yeah. Like, man, I remember praying for this years ago, but it doesn't come around like this. I'm in the North Tower, and I'm ministering to the brothers and stuff. And I'm like, man, this is great. And we're standing there, we're, we're praying, we're on Bible study. And the next day, I was released. Went down to traffic court for the judge. Hey, can you get on counter? Yeah, I can get on counter. How much you pay? I told him. All right, get out of here. But it was the prayer and obedience to God that began to open that door. We didn't go in the front. I came in on the inside. Come on now. I, I, I came in on the inside amongst the troops, amongst the ranks of those in the North Tower, and I had it all night. Amen? There was no time limit on the Bible study. We was there all night. Fellowship in the Lord. Amen. Next slide. As I close. Noah was 600 years old when God asked him to build an ark. He loved God and was willing to obey because of that, we're, he was, we were saved. God asked Abraham, who was 100 years old, and Sarah, 99, to have a child. God chose them. They loved God and obeyed. And because of their obedience, we now have the nation called Israel. Moses was about 85 years old when God asked him to lead 2 million people out of bondage from Egypt. Now, I don't know if you're kind of like me, but as you get a little older, your tolerance goes down. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I, I begin to say things like, ain't nobody got time for that. Amen? Amen. I ain't got time for that. But God used these individuals in their older age, to call them to do something phenomenal. God used them to show 
the power of love and obedience together. And next slide. In Jesus Christ, we find the perfect model of obedience. As his disciples, we follow Christ's example as well as his commands. Our motivation for obedience should be love. Amen. Biblical obedience to God simply means this. To hear, to trust, to submit, and to surrender to God and his word. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand.